Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. I hope you all had a good week. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I share these What's for Dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you guys some meal ideas and some motivation to cook more for your family. So if you like that kind of thing, I hope that you'll stick around and subscribe down below so that you can come back and see my future videos. As always, any recipes that I mention will be linked down below. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's What's for Dinner. It is Friday and tonight we have a super easy dinner. I've shared probably this exact dinner multiple times. We've got some tilapia and we did cheddar this time. So cheddar crusted tilapia. And then this is couscous from Aldi. I've talked about this before. It's super easy. You just boil water and pour it on the couscous and let it sit for five minutes. And this is the garlic flavor. And then I made some zucchini with some badia and toni seasoning. And yeah, super easy dinner. Um, I've shared the cheddar crusted chicken, tilapia, and parmesan crusted chicken and tilapia multiple times. I actually have a video for me doing it on chicken. Do it the same way exactly with the tilapia. Easy peasy. Um, Elijah has cucumber because he doesn't really like zucchini, but I did give him a little piece of zucchini to try to see if he likes it this time. But that is going to be dinner for Friday. It is Saturday and tonight is pizza night. So I just made a pepperoni pizza on our favorite fail proof dough. And this is going to be for the kids. And then when Andy gets home later, I'm going to make me and him a barbecue chicken pizza. So I will show you guys how I put that together later. But as I said, this is our favorite fail-proof pizza dough. And I've showed it multiple times. I will have it linked down below for you guys. Okay, I'm getting ready to make me and Andy's barbecue chicken pizza. I'm actually going to make a barbecue chicken pizza and a pepperoni pizza. And then we can have leftovers for breakfast or lunch tomorrow. So in here, I have a can of chicken. I am using canned chicken breast just because it's easy and we have a bunch we should use. So I've got that in here and I'm, to it I'm going to add some of this Kansas City barbecue sauce. We really like this. It's from Aldi. I might need to get another jar out of the cabinet but I'm going to go ahead and start with that and get the, get the chicken coated with that and then I'm going to roll out my pizza dough, spread on some barbecue sauce as the sauce. I'm going to use mozzarella cheese and then put my chicken on there and then I'm also going to top it with some cheddar cheese and then get that in the oven. I almost forgot to mention, I do par-bake this crust. This crust cooks at 500 degrees, so I'm gonna do it for four minutes and then take it out and put the toppings on and then cook it for another five to six minutes. On Sunday, I made a Tex-Mex chicken and rice casserole. This recipe comes from my Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. I will have the cookbook and the recipe linked down below. I started off by heating up some oil in my pan, and once it was hot, I added in some onion and sauteed that for a few minutes. 
Once the onions were tender, I added in one box of chicken flavored rice and the seasoning packet and I sauteed that until it started to turn golden. Next, I added in water and brought that to a boil. Then I covered and reduced the heat and simmered for 20 minutes. After the 20 minutes, I turned off the heat and added in two cans of drained chicken. You can do rotisserie chicken or some other kind of cooked chicken. I just have all this canned chicken and I want to try to work it into recipes. And then I added in some cumin, oregano, chili powder, diced green chilies, and some diced tomatoes. I gave that a good stir and then transferred it to a baking dish and topped with cheese. I baked this on 375 for 15 minutes until it was nice and bubbly. This casserole is always a hit here at our house. It was one of the first things I made from this cookbook when I got it like 12 years ago. So, you know, I've made it many times since then. We like to eat it with chips and salsa and we've really been liking this uh, restaurant style salsa from Aldi. It is Monday and tonight we are going to be doing lasagna. I went ahead and browned some ground beef and then I had my red sauce left over from last week. I did end up getting two whole jars of the sauce. So I dumped that in there once my beef was browned and then I filled this up probably about halfway with water to have a little bit more liquid because I am using the oven ready lasagna and you want to make sure you have enough like sauce or liquid for getting those cooked in the oven. So I am using those and then I've got some Parmesan cheese, some ricotta. Usually I do cottage cheese but I did buy ricotta the other week when I did the skillet lasagna and I want to use that up so we're going to use that and I've got some mozzarella so I'm just going to get to layering everything in my pan and then this will bake on 375 for probably about an hour.
Okay, to go with our lasagna, I just cut up that bread that I made last week for the chicken cheese steaks. I cut that up and I put some more of this Chef Chamois butter that I talked about before on it. It makes really good a garlic bread. And that's what we're having for dinner. Just keeping it simple tonight. The lasagna is delicious. I already tasted it. And it is very good. For Tuesday, I made a baked teriyaki salmon. I made this recipe a couple months back and we really enjoyed it. It just was like a little different thing to have with our fried rice. So for that, I whisked together some lemon juice, some orange juice, some honey, some water, some ginger, some red pepper flakes, soy sauce, minced garlic, and then the original recipe called for flour to kind of thicken it. But last time I felt like it didn't really get thick, so this time instead of flour, I did cornstarch and it turned out much better. So after I whisked all that together, I poured it over my salmon and baked it in the oven on 400 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. And we just serve that over top of some fried rice that I made. I will have a link down below so you can see how I make my fried rice. We just absolutely love fried rice. And then on my bowl, I also topped it with some green onion because I really like that flavor with it. It is Wednesday and tonight for dinner, I made slow cooker or crock pot pork carnitas. I shared this a while back. Might have been my birthday. I can't remember for sure. No, on my birthday I made steak, but I have made this in the past and it was delicious. You just throw it in the crock pot, which is over there, with some lime and onion and oranges and some seasoning and stuff. And you let it cook all day and then you take it out, shred it up, pour the like liquid mixture over top and broil it for a few minutes so you get some crispy bits. It is so delicious. We love that. Then I made some black beans, got some flour tortillas that I heated up. These are the kids' plates. They just wanted cheese with their pork. And then I made Instant Pot cilantro lime rice. I take my perfect white rice, add in some cilantro, lime, and lemon juice. And it's perfect. I will have those recipes linked down below for you guys. And then here is my plate. I just have pork, cheese, cilantro, and tomato on my tacos. We were at the pool all day. Let me yeah. see those cheeks. A little bit red. Um, my hair is Your hair is so still wet. Don't get your hair in my food. But I wanted to make a quick and easy crock pot recipe just so that when we came home from the pool, we had something easy for dinner. And uh, it worked out perfectly. That is going to be dinner for Wednesday. It is Thursday and tonight for dinner we are just having something really easy bacon cheeseburger so I cook the bacon in the air fryer tonight I do it on 400 for about like 12 minutes like stirring it halfway through this is mine sadly we were out of tomato so I just have ketchup and mustard burger cheese bacon lettuce and mayo no tomato I have a cloth and pickle on the side and then we have some plain potato chips from Aldi we had the choice between that and barbecue the kids just have bacon and cheese on their burgers and they have some cucumbers on the side I cooked my burgers in my cast iron um, I really like cooking them in this I think I like them better in the cast iron than I do on the griddle so cast iron or grill are my favorite ways to cook burgers and I'm gonna give you all a little bonus later I'm gonna show you how to clean this somebody asked if I would share how I clean my cast iron so I'm gonna do that as a little bonus in this video I have more patties in the fridge um, saving for when Andy gets home later tonight. I will go ahead and cook those fresh for him and then if the kids want more or I want more there's another burger for us and yeah that is going to be dinner for Thursday. Okay so these are the things that I use to care for and clean my cast iron. So to start off I have this little lodge scraper. 
have this link to my Amazon store, I will go through and try to scrape up all of that on the bottom of the pan and I dump that out, like wipe it out with a paper towel or whatever to get all that out. Sometimes if it's a little too hard to scrub, I will add in some hot water and some coarse kosher salt and scrub it with that. And it, most of the time I don't need to use that, but on occasion I do use that. And then I go th over it with this little hard scrubby brush. Um, I really like these like super firm bristle brushes and I will scrub it with this and hot water, no soap. And I'll rinse it really well, make sure it's nice and clean. And then I will dry it with a dishcloth. So I've got that to the side for that. And once it's really dry on all on the outside and inside, I will rub it down with some oil. Usually I use vegetable oil. Sometimes I use canola oil. Canola oil is all I have right now. So that's what I'm going to use. And I'll pour a little bit in here rub that all around with my paper towel on the inside and outside and that is it. I do not heat it up after I use it. I just use it frequently so that it gets heated up. Um, but yeah, I don't like heat it up on the stove or anything after every use when I clean it. As long as I make sure I get it completely dry with a towel, I've never had any issues. And that is how it looks after I clean it. Nice and shiny and perfect. It's nice and smooth. And I just store it right there on top of my toaster oven. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.